Well, uh, here we are again, part 7 of the office renovation video. In uh, this video here, we're going to do some more work in the old office. Now, if plans go the way um, I'm planning them to do, hopefully by the end of the day we got uh, some type of a base wood, if you will, for the countertop going all the way around the room to right about uh, in here somewhere. Um, as well as I want to get the filler strips, uh, not filler strips, but the little uh, pine put on the end of the cabinets here to fill that. As well as uh, on the end of this cabinet here, on both ends you see the particle board. I want to throw a piece of pine up there, like this, just to make it you know pretty so you can paint it. As well as, um, I've had a little bit of a change of plans from the last time. If uh, you remember in the, the last part there, we put this uh, filler strip up on here, just like we've done with the other ones. What my plan was to do was to put a filler strip in like this, and then stand up. Um, it would be that board right there, a chunk of three-quarter pine on this end to make like a complete uh, filler um, end panel, gable end, whatever you want to call it right there. But um, upon further review, upon further uh, thought, uh, I think it would make it too um, closed in. Because keep in mind that panel will come out 24 inches, you know, which would be like right there. And as you're walking in the room, you're going to have per se a wall right here and then a door on this side. So what I done is I rethought that. I uh, decided to omit the, um, you know, the gable end or the filler end there just to, um, you know, make it more of an open concept. And then what I'm gonna do is I have the desktop come out to probably, you know, here-ish on the wall. Maybe if I get fancy, have it to have a curve in it a soft edge, you know, just because I can. We'll have to see how it goes on the whole uh, soft edge thing. But what I want to do, like I said earlier, is throw a piece of pine in here and uh, glue her down so she can be painted. Now, one of the problems I've ran into is now that I have that to deal with, change of plans per se, is I gotta cut this along here and uh, you know on top and bottom as well to remove the strapping because that's what was going to hold the uh, gable end in as well as a few more braces but the only trouble with that is um, I glued those on so uh, they're not going to want to come off without a fight but luckily I have the uh, handy dandy Dremel series uh, Multimax here model number MM20 now I don't even remember if I'd done a review on this tool when I first bought it. I think I might have just grabbed it and went. But um, you know, it's really shone the last little bit on this project. Uh, I've done quite a few cuts if you notice on these ones here. If you notice how flush they are with the cabinet, they're, they're flush. Now there's no tool in my uh, tool collection that would do that same type of cut without, uh, you know, being awkward or causing damage or nothing. This Dremel's great. But yeah guys, I'll give you a bit of an operations check on the Dremel here because I'll, I'll film while I'm cutting along this line. And then I'll show you what kind of mess it makes when you're pulling uh, a piece of 5 8 uh, plywood away from a wall that's been glued down with PL Premium. She's uh, not gonna come off without a fight. So guys, uh, let's get at her. Well guys, as you've seen there, it just dremeled uh, basically a perfectly flush line in this wood all the way down to the drywall. One thing I like about the uh, Dremel blade is there is a mark on it that you could put the thickness of your wood in so you know how deep you go. So if you're trying to make a flush cut in something, 
that you don't want to be going through it, you can mark it out to go through it. Now what I find here is, uh, being I have glue around it, if I were just to pry on it, I'd end up tearing the paper off the drywall probably like away and having a big disaster. So what I'm going to have to do here is score around, you know, it here. So um, the paper, you know, will basically cut in the section of paper that's under it. So when I pry it up, hopefully it'll come out in, you know, semi-clean. So guys, again, I'll switch over to the old Sony and I'll give you an up-close uh, view. Okay, so now that I got the paper scored, um, I've removed any of the fasteners that were holding it in. I'm going to try to get behind it and give it a gentle try away. Just to give it a bit of a work, get around the side of it, you know, and then try to get underneath of it. Pretty much like that. And just like I expected, it pulled away the first layer of paper. And you look here, you can see we got a bit of an indent here to deal with now. So what we do is we'll clean this up, pulling away any of the, the glue ridges and a few things like that. Probably going to end up giving her a bit of a gentle sand. And then we'll end up uh, filling it. Um, you know, trying to uh, fill this hole, trying to maybe float the wall a little bit in the area. So guys, let's get at the top one and then um, we'll start working on the little pine uh, filler right here. So guys, I uh, just finished taking the uh, measurements here for the, you know, the pines on the ends like I was saying earlier. Uh, got the old saw set up out there. And as long as I don't make a miscut, I'm going to have exactly enough pine that I need to finish my job. I went and dug around in my uh, scrap pine collection and uh, I had a piece that I didn't know I had that was almost the perfect, uh, well, I can get the piece out of by cutting down. But guys, like I said, just finished taking my measurements and I'm uh, going to run back outside and give them all a cut. So guys, we'll see you outside. Well guys, as you just seen there, uh, just got all our pine cut. And it's funny, out of that whole 4x8 sheet of pine, um, all I really got left is about a 1x1 one one square and uh, some little scrappies. So, uh, you know, that worked out fairly well. So guys, let's run back inside, fire up the old air compressor, and we'll nail these on. Well guys, uh, got all the pine nailed up here on the uh, you know the ends of the cabinets um, you know got it all nailed up there as well I would nail this one up uh, today as well except we got to do the mudding and the paint for you know right in there and of course the mudding's too uh, dry right now to be doing anything like that but um, next up guys is to work on the base wood for the uh, 
countertop or the desktop. Outside I have the uh, one piece there all uh, set up already. I'm going to cut her now to seven feet which uh, is the measurement from that wall out to uh, I believe it's roughly uh, in here somewhere. So uh, let's go up there and uh, we'll give her all a cut. So guys I measured out uh, seven foot length in this board here all the way down and uh, I've got a little mark made on the wood and of course if you guys don't have one of these yet you know suggest buying one they're great for sheet goods like drywall plywood and what I'm going to do now is scribe my line across there and then take my handy dandy Ryobi saw and uh, give her a cut pretty much just like that. So guys I'm gonna throw you on the old tripod while I make the cut and then we'll go back inside. So guys just a little check in for you here. As you see here I got all the uh, base wood for the desktop all cut. I got this piece here that's about seven feet this one here, the middle piece, is about 65 inches. And this other one here is sitting at about 48. Uh, originally in my plan, I left uh, a bracket off underneath this countertop because I figured I'd have to put the uh, filing cabinets in there. But um, like uh, most plans, they change. When I uh, did the Saskatoon trip there, I found this one at the uh, ReStore. So of course I had to remove a bracket from there to fit that one in. So basically what I'm going to have to do is put the bracket from there back into here. So it gives it uh, some support. So guys, pretty much to fasten um, this piece here to the you know adjoining piece, what I'm going to do is put uh, some PL on here and then uh, use the screws to hold it basically till the PL dries and then uh, she should be good. But yeah guys, let's get at her and uh, I'll check back in after. So guys, as you've seen, we fastened these to the uh, desktop, both uh, left and right side. Yeah, and if you're wondering why um, they're upside down or on the top of the desktop surface, well, there's a reason for that madness. There, it's not, you know, I haven't lost my uh, marbles um, completely or anything. There's a reason for that. What I've done now is I'm going to do is flip the desktop over, um, pretty much. Uh, like that and this end that's already pre-glued will slide into there and this end here again that's already pre-glued will slide under that end there and then of course I'll run some screws in from the bottom side and then we'll be pretty much golden so guys um, let's get at her and uh, check back in well guys, I uh, just got the countertop uh, flipped over and uh, fastened to the, uh, you know, adjoining piece. Uh, just about to slide in, uh, you know, the next, uh, the next piece to the puzzle here. And uh, start uh, fastening it down as well. So yeah guys, uh, just slide her on in. Let her drop down. And pretty much away she goes. 
Like I mentioned earlier, I added the other support underneath there. And uh, we'll just run a few screws in here and then she'll be good. Well guys, decided to shut her down for the evening. Uh, just to give you a recap um, on what we've done today. We got the pine all uh, cut and in pit place on all the ends. Except for, of course, this uh, end here. Uh, we got the little strapping that was sticking out, dremeled. And the holes, you know, the first uh, fill on the mud. Because of, uh, due to change of plans, you know. Got the uh, desktop uh, glued together and uh, set in place. Um, still need to fasten her down and everything. But, uh, you know, she's coming along fairly well. Um, of course, as you've seen there, had to add the extra um, support underneath there to to carry on here. Um, still undecided whether I'm going to leave the desktop open at uh, at this end or if I'm going to put a short little gable end in there. Uh, being that I already got, you know, the piece and all and I don't really have any other use for a three quarter inch pine. But guys, you know, it was a pretty good day. Uh, a little short in the office project today, but uh, it still was a fairly decent day. Um, next, uh, in the next video, we'll be fastening the desktop down, making sure it's all uh, level and everything like that. And then we'll probably start, um, you know, doing work on the walls, like filling the uh, holes and, uh, you know, fixing some of the, um, you know, nicks and scratches that, uh, happen during assembly. But guys, that concludes part eight of the office renovation project. So as always, thank you for watching Maxwell's World. Comment, subscribe, and enjoy.